So we got some great stuff. We got some great stuff today um, that I love to. Sh I, I'm excited to share. So last week, there's a lot of uh, a lot of you were very fortunate and uh, to go, and I say that because there was so many golden nuggets at the Bill Pipes uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I was not there, but I did have some time with Bill Pipes on Thursday, and we got a lot of catching up to do uh, catching up and um, on everything that went took place um, Monday through Wednesday. And then the, uh, he did a demonstrate uh, a presentation out in Sarasota. What an amazing, amazing, uh, full of energy. Chris, were you there? I was. It was actually uh, one my first time to uh, attend a, 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 a you know Coach Pipes uh, um, um, event, but also it was the first kind of event like that that I've ever been to. What impact did it make on you? You know, it really showed me a lot of potential that's there. Uh, it um, Discipline was a big thing that it taught me about. And uh, just following the process, ripping it off and redoing it myself, you know, it was very important. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'm going to share a lot of stuff with you guys today. And at the very end, there'll be a, a QR code that you can pull the scripts and the PowerPoints uh, to this down. So if you ever want to do a demonstration or a PowerPoint, uh, Bill Pipe says it best, rip off and duplicate is the best uh, presentation you can do um, and, and personalize it to you. So if you want to do a training in, in your office, or if you want to do training for some agents or whatever it may be, um, you'll be able to download this PowerPoint from the QR code and uh, you'll be able to have access to it. So I'm going to get started it, and then I'm going to leave uh, some time in between for some uh, some of our guests that went to the Bill Pipes. I really want them to share an aha and an action plan that they're going to implement because we know, you know, <laughs> building energy, you know, karate chopping and all that other stuff is fantastic. By the way, I posted the video of, of Steve Pugh and Laurie Robles and, and, uh, 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 Claire doing their karate chopping. So, uh, that's great. <laughs> Claire looks lethal, man. I ain't messing with Claire no more. I'll tell you right now. He was, yeah. And so was Lori. So, uh, it looked like it was a lot of fun. Uh, so, and what was really awesome, by the way, guys, our, our internal group of people that we have on our calls and our, in our, with our group and everything, there was about 40 of us. So near, you know, there was about 300 agents total and 40 or 40 of those attendees or, or maybe even slightly more were from, from here. So fantastic. And congratulations on attending there. All right. So I'm going to get the presentation going and, uh, you know, Again, um, we'll, we're going to leave some time in there for uh, Q&A and everything else. So um, it's time for your breakthrough. If you've seen this, you would know, like Chris said, you know, it's, it's about the consistency. It's about having that breakthrough. Guys, I, I was just saying earlier, tomorrow's never promised. If you don't start doing Im implementing things today, tomorrow may never show up. And if you start implement, implementing things today, you're that one step closer to the financial goal that you desire. So it's time for your breakthrough. Right now is, is probably one of the best times in our real estate industry in the last 10 years to take our fair share, right? So now is your time. But here's the thing. It's work. And you got to do the work. The average agent income in the U.S. is $44,000. That's $21 an hour. Guys, do you know right now, I'm, I'm on A1A here in Daytona Beach. There's a sign at the McDonald's with a, I think it's a $3,000 sign in bonus and $21 an hour for 40 hours a week. Guys, you got into real estate to fund a perfect life financially. You got into real estate for the freedom of time. You got into real estate for the freedom of financial freedom. 
but you're earning the income of an employee. And there's nothing wrong with McDonald's. I got a friend that started out at McDonald's at uh, $2.75 an hour and now owns several of them. What I am saying is you got into real estate for your own business and the average income is $44,000 across the U.S. Now, I know that $44,000 a year is not going to help you survive financially in our economy. So you are in full control to do what you need to do to make things work, right? So real estate should be played as a, as a seven-figure income. Bill Pipes talks about it. He said, if you wanted, if you have a desire to get to a seven-figure income over a period of four years, five years, your financial goal today, double it the next year, double it that, you will, you will be in seven figures before you know it. But stop using the limited beliefs that you are not able to do it because you're not a Steve Pugh or Lizette or whoever. No, you're you and you find your superpower in order to, to, to earn that income, which everyone can, okay? So why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we? Why aren't you? You know, if you have a desire to succeed in real estate and you go through this exercise today, there's nothing stopping you but the person in the mirror. That person that you look at every single morning is directly responsible for the income that you are earning currently. And you need to ask yourself, would I hire me? Would I hire me to be my listing agent? Would I hire me to be my buyer's agent? It's never the market that's the issue. It's always you. you listen, when the market crashed in 2007, and I say seven, because that's when I have felt it. I had over 40 active listings on the market sitting there. And I said, this market, blah, blah, blah. And here's what my, uh, my coach said. No, it's you, not the market. Find the motivated buyers and sellers. Find the buyers and sellers that you can work with. Find, you have to hunt. You have to dig deeper right? When the land is dry, those roosters have to dig real deep in order to, to get those worms. Right now, the market is phenomenal for opportunity. It is not phenomenal if you want to be an order taker. Right now is your time and you can earn it if you desire. There's eight traits of a seven-figure earner, and I'm not going to cover all eight of those today. High-level competency, competences competitiveness, sorry, and the desire to win. You don't have to win every time, but here's the thing, guys. If you have a desire to be competitive and you don't win, you end up in second place, third place. Isn't it better than last place? They have developed world-class skills. If you're trying to create your own uh, scripts and dialogue, you're already failing. You need to take the scripts and the dialogues that's already there, that's already proven to work. Stop trying to be, stop trying to complicate it or overcomplicate it and use what you have. By the way, if someone tells me they don't have scripts for for sale binaries, expired, uh, door knocking, open house, I'm going to get very frustrated or I may say, all right, I'll give you grace, like Lizette, right? We deserve grace. Inside of the GPS um, uh, Facebook page, if you go into files and documents, there's all kinds of scripts, dialogues, everything. There's business plans. There's all kinds of stuff. They maintain an unwavering standard. There's standards. It's not about the talent. It's about the standards they have. You can get the most talented person who doesn't have standards and you have a, a mediocre, uh, talented person that has high standards will succeed a whole lot more. They're, they're strategic in three to four key lead sources, right? If you're, if you're out there buying leads as your only lead sources, you're already messed up because you're going to fall behind financially. Your ROI is not going to be there. 
I highly recommend you look for a lead generation source based on your superpower. If you love to talk to people, go to the gym and talk to people. Go to the supermarket and talk to people. Go to go to a parking lot, go to a car wash, go anywhere, anywhere you go, speak to people. They track and monitor everything in their business, everything. Now think about this. Every successful business has to track its numbers, whether it's real estate, whether it's car sales, whether it's a restaurant, they got to understand how many customers do we need a day to earn this amount of money? How many upsells do we have to have to earn this much money? Right? So you got to make sure you track your numbers. They track and monitor everything in their business. They execute quickly. If someone says, hey, there's a million dollars behind that wall, you just need to run through it. I'm not thinking about the injuries I'm going to get by running through it. I'm thinking about, okay, to get the money and then figure out the, the, the pain later, right? Execute quickly, mess up, screw up, fail. That's the key. You want to fail often because when you're failing, you're learning, all right? They have a plan and they follow it to it daily. Be so consistent that it becomes subconsciously in your mind that you just do it, right? Every single morning, I have the same routine subconsciously. I don't write it down of what, what time I'm getting up and, and when I'm brushing my teeth and when I'm showering and getting dressed. It's subconsciously there. I'm working it. They only associate with other winners and believers and badasses. Here's the thing. Stop us, Stop hanging out with the people who are making excuses who, on the business and the and the team leader and and EXP or Remax. And, oh, you, you know, this company sucks and, you know, they don't give me leads. No. You don't deserve leads. Go find them. Go earn them. Go earn them. And by the way, give me a hundred bad leads. And 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 I'll tell you what. Those hundred bad leads over a period of 30 days will turn into appointments because you're not calling them daily. You're not texting them daily. You're not emailing them daily. See, just because the lead says no doesn't mean no. It means they don't need your services at this time. Follow up with them. And you haven't earned the right to earn their business yet. Follow up with them. So two what's and two why's. What do I want? You know, he did this exercise. And by the way, guys, I'm going to kind of scroll through this stuff, but you can have these PowerPoints at the very end. You just have to scan the QR code. What do you want? Start with your why. What's your meaningful purpose? And then, then the want. Uh, it helps the why and then go to why is my goal an absolute must. What you need to do is you need to figure out how much money do I need to earn a month to live the life I want to live and then add 30% to that for expenses and everything else. Okay. So if your, your, your income goal monthly to live comfortably and happily is 10,000 a month, you want to make 13. And that is your absolute must. And then you got to back end it. You got to kind of go through the economic model and you got to figure out, all right, if I take, if I need to make 13,000 a month, how many calls do I need to make a day? How much lead generation do I need to make a day? How many contacts do I need to make a day? And then simplify it based on your daily activities to get the end goal of the 13 or $140,000 a year. Anybody that does a, a, health, a fitness show isn't in shape the day before without training 12 to 18 weeks out. That's not training. That's just the dieting part. Finish with what am I willing to sacrifice? There's sacrifices in everything, guys. But here's the biggest sacrifice. Working nine to five and sacrificing all your time away from your family and your friends and, your, and the life that you desire. There's sacrifices in everything. What are you willing to sacrifice and what are you not willing to sacrifice? So as we come into uh, here, most agents know what's happening. Good agents understand what's happening. Great agents can explain what's happening. Know your market, okay? So you have to understand what your market is. RPR, if, you're in the, if you have RPR attached to your MLS, click on it right? And it'll tell you the market stats in your county. 
Do you know in the Daytona Beach area, inventory from last month alone is up 34%. Steve, you just said, wow, it's at 4,300 active listings in the MLS right now. When the market was going... When the market was going crazy in 2021, there was 700. The days on market, months on market is now five months. Two months ago, it was 3.5 months. More inventory, more time on market, which creates more buyer opportunities to negotiate. Do you know your market? Do you know the inventory? Do you know the time on market? Do you know if it's a buyer's market or a seller's market? See, there's a meter there that tells you what the temperature meter of where the buyer's market and seller's market is um, as well. Are you displaying that to your database? See, you should be sending out the market pulse to your database every single month. Maybe you dictate it. Hey, Steve, this is Tom. I just wanted to let you know that the there's 4,300 active listings on the MLS. It's up 34% from last month. The time on market is, is, is rising, and it's a great time for buyers to pick and choose a home that they desire and still be able to negotiate a price. Whatever. Think of something. Be creative. There's nothing perfect, you know, and, and, the, and the video doesn't have to be professional video either. Just use your hand. Those of that, you that seen my video yesterday of me walking my dog talking about getting on this call today, it was shaking and all that other stuff. The wind was blowing. You got a good view of my 11-pound uh, Yorkie, you know. Um, well, no great agents can explain the market. If you're talking to someone and they live in your community, you can tell them, hey, listen, I know that's you live in the Bellagio model. That's the five bedroom, three bath. You know, the only thing I didn't like about it is the massive bedrooms upstairs. Do you like that? Because as I get tired, I don't want to walk up all those stairs. You know, let them know that, you know, the market, you know, the community, you know, everything. Scripts. Scripts are the most important thing for anything that you're doing. And everyone has a script. You go to McDonald's, it's a script. How can I help you? Fantastic. Would you like fries with that? Would you like to supersize it? Whatever. There's scripts for everything, guys. Know your scripts. Again, call everyone and let them know about the reality of today's market. Are you informing your buyers and sellers in your database of what's going on today? Don't be afraid to go, hey, Steve, Tom Martin, uh, we worked with each other about three uh, three years ago. Hey, what do you think about what's going on in the NAR market with the lawsuits? Anything I can answer for you on uh, truths and myths about what's going on? Because the media usually does a great job of twisting it into what it's not. Open up the conversation. Get it going. You know, you want to, do you want to get paid like a pro? You better damn practice like one. Right. You know, some of the greatest athletes of all time don't just jump on the field and perform without all the years of practice and mindset and skill set. You know, uh, the, the death crawl by uh, facing the Giants video that we that I play uh, not as often as I should goes to show that the leader, as soon as the leader says they're going to get they're going to lose, the whole team thinks they're going to lose. As soon as the leader is proven that there's perseverance and and there's an opportunity to win if you just collaborate as a team you win see you can win if you choose to and you can lose if you choose to so then you have to practice like a pro like we were just saying so the 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 six r's of mastery is practice 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 and and if there's anyone that i know that does this religiously it is steve pew he he reads, he writes, he role plays. He, I don't know if he's recording and listening to his script and role play. Um, and, and he does it, right? So he does script and role play a couple times a week on Zoom, but he does it every single day in his office with his team. And he does it every single day. And by the way, Steve's been doing it probably 27 years. Do you think he knows the script? Why does he practice it every day? Because here's the thing. 
every day you come in, there can get distractions. So you got to master it. You got to practice it. Um, they maintain unwavering standards. And the standards is time, mindset, and energy. Do you know we all have 1,440 minutes in a day? All Every single one of us, Lizette has it, Steve has it, I have it, Donald Trump has it, Biden has it, uh, Steve Jobs had it, 1,440 minutes. Why do they accomplish so much more than us if they have the same amount of time? See, you got to make sure that you're using your time wisely. And then, you know, the other thing, too, is how much are you really worth? Knowing what you're really worth is so important. So let's, you know, here's the thing. What is your hourly rate? If you want to make $100,000 in a year and you divide that by 2,080 minutes, that's your 40-hour work week per year, that'll tell you your hourly rate. That gives you the opportunity to go, wait a minute, is that task worth $100 an hour or should I leverage that off? Okay, so if, if your desire is to make $200,000 a year, divide it by 2080 and it'll tell you your hourly rate. So what are you worth? It, the more you know what you're worth, the more you'll uh, appreciate your time. Hire a VA, they're great, they're fantastic. They're, they're worth a whole lot more than they get paid, by the way, in, in my opinion. So find out what your hourly rate is and then calculate that and go, all right, if I'm going to go show a property, is it worth this much time per hour or do I hire a company to do the showings for me? By the way, we have companies that will show properties to your buyers. Okay. Um, no. The best paragraph or sentence I can tell someone is no. I said this to Steve last week or the week before. Did I not, Steve? I said, tell me no, and I don't need an explanation. Don't tell me yes, because you feel like, hey, I, you know, Tom's my friend and I just want to do this. Yes. And then, holy cow, I got other obligations. I totally forgot. I didn't look at my calendar. No means no, period. I don't give an explanation. If someone says, hey, can you uh, do something for me Monday at nine o'clock? I just say no. Well, why not? I already have an appointment and I'm not, I'm not changing that. No, that's it. Because every time that you say yes to something, you're actually telling the most important things that are in your calendar, no. And that comes from the book, The One Thing. No is okay. Guys, no is okay. Stop being a yes person. Stop being a yes person. No, just learn the power of the no. And when you do that, actually, everyone around me understands now when I say no, it's not a, a rude thing. It's, oh, he's got something else on his calendar. Because I will always say yes. Matter of fact, if, if someone said to me, hey, can you take this call at nine o'clock? I'd say, I can take that call, but not at nine o'clock. Here's some times available. Do that with your buyers and sellers also. Stop letting them dictate what time they're going to meet you and you run your business. Every battle is won before it's fought. That means they're prepared. They know their plan and then they go in. It's just like your script and role playing. The more you script and role play, the more you are uh, getting ready to win that battle with that four cell bomber that expired, that door knocking, that open house, the whatever it is. The best businesses are prospect and base, market and hints, period. I will challenge any single person on this darn call. There's 39 people right now. If you are not pro prospecting based, you are just spending a crap ton of money to be marketing enhanced. If you are prospecting based, building a database 
your, your enhanced marketing goes a whole lot further on your ROI. Prospecting base doesn't mean you have to call for sale by owners or expireds. It could be doing open houses. It could be doing community events. It could be doing buyer seminars. By the way, holy cow, just had an aha. Uh -huh. Who out there is doing buyer seminars with the NAR uh, change market changes? Think about that, right? That's a great opportunity right now. Hey, we're doing buyer seminars on how to buy properties in the new uh, commission uh, NAR uh, settlement. Because buyers are going to get so confused on what to do and where to go and how to turn. And then they're going to be uh, they're going to be getting advice from a mediocre agent who's working for a flat fee of 500 bucks. And that's what I say, mediocre. Okay, guys. So prospect and base, holding hold buyer seminars right now through August is probably a, an, an amazing opportunity. And by the way, if you don't have an office and you're, you know, find an office or find a title company that you can partner with, uh, find a lender, all those people are great to partner with to do buyer seminars, selling seminars, how to sell your home in the upcoming market where you don't have to buy to pay the buyer's commission. These are things that you should be thinking about. These are opportunities to build that database. So you got to hunt daily. There's no, there's no getting around it. You have to prospect. You have to prospect. If you are not willing to prospect, get on a team. And by the way, what happens when you get on a team? You have to do what? Prospect. Okay. Nothing is handed to you for free, period. Nothing. All right. So an action plan. You know, you got to make sure that whatever you learn and whatever you, Chris, whatever you took from Bill Pipes and you keep it written down in a notebook. Wow, that's great. And that's fantastic. But if you don't take any action, it had no value. You know, one of the things I used to do and I stopped doing it because I save all my journals now is I would I used to bring my journals with me, but I I just bring a notepad with me to an event. And what I do is I take two to three pages of notes and then I take all those three pages and I make one page of notes and I throw the other three pages out. And then what I do is I take that one page and I put an action plan in place for one or two items that I'm going to implement immediately. And I throw the other page out because I don't want to be too confused over all the notes, right? We, we talk about this a lot with uh, a lot of people that go to events they're so confused and they get overwhelmed because they they allow themselves to be overwhelmed by having too much information. Take action on one or two things, go back again, take action on one or two things, go back again, take and that that way there, you're never going to feel that overwhelmness. All right. And Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, Bill Pipes, some of the best coaches in the industry will tell you: take action on one or two things that you learned from this event and throw the rest out. Get up, get dressed, and get your uh, your your uh, your butt into into the office every day. If you're not working out of an office and you're working from home, get up, get dressed up, and get into your office on your computer. If uh, you know, I, I use this young man as an example all the time, and I was speaking to him the other day at the gym. He's I don't even think he's thirty yet, and he got into real estate at the age of twenty one uh, with you know when I was running Keller Williams, he, he joined the office as a brand new agent. Now he has his own brokerage. His lead, his lead. I said, Patrick, what's the best lead generation source that you have? He goes, Tom, I go to the gym twice a day. I'm in the gym for two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. And I said, how much do you work out? He goes, I don't, I just go and talk to people and I hand out t-shirts. And he did 15 million last year, by the way, himself, his own production. So not a good, not a bad return, right? Buys a bunch of t-shirts and hands them out in the gym. And when you go in the gym, you think it's his real estate company because everyone's got his darn t-shirt on. You know, I'm ready to go around and rip those shirts off. I don't know. Um, but you got to get dressed up. You got to get out there and you got to go to the office every day. If your office is your home office, get up, get ready, go and do your thing because work works. Create and adhere to uh, a strict AM schedule from 6 AM to 12 PM. You, you know, I'm, I'm not up till, uh, you know, yeah, I'm up till I'm not 12 AM. I'm in bed by 
830 or so. But anyways, have that subconscious uh, calendar always available up until 12 o'clock. You know, lead generation, blah, 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 door knocking, whatever. Um, warm calls, uh, gratitude calls. You know, Curtis Lucy talks about gratitude, congratulative, uh, congratulations, um, appreciation uh, cards every Sunday for 30 minutes. He does congratulations, appreciations, and congratulations. You know, right now, a lot of kids are graduating high school. If you took a snapshot of someone posting their child graduating, and put it on an AM card, sent it to him, said, hey, I just wanted to capture this and send it to you. Congratulations on your daughter chosen FSU to, to pursue her college uh, career or whatever, education. That card is unsolicited and it has all your branding on the last page. And you can use any source of, uh, of company you want. But getting, getting a regimen out there every day is key. Implement, uh, prospect and plan, uh, contact five people you know, contact five people you don't know, and contact five leads and set an appointment. 15 people. So contact people you know, contact people you don't know, and then contact five leads and set an appointment. One appointment a day, guys, equals over 400000 in income. One appointment a day equals over $400,000 in income. That's five appointments a week, 20 appointments a month, 240 appointments a year. You're making over $400,000. See appointments convert into contracts, contracts convert into closings. Closings convert into paydays. All right. So... I gotta move my screen. Call everyone that said I'm going to buy or sell in 2022 or 23 that has not bought or sold. Get a strategy with them to get them back in the game. Guys, if you sold a home in 21, 22, um, or 20, I would be calling them because now they have equity. A lot of people need that equity right now because they might be, uh, you know, they might have overextended in credit card debt or or other debt, or maybe they got $200,000 in equity in their home and they're gonna use 100,000 to pay everything off and use that other 100,000 as their down payment. It doesn't matter that the interest rates are higher and they're at a 2.9%, uh, that money's more important to them for their financial freedom of their debt. I promise you, if you call people that you sold homes to in 20, 21, 22, or even in the middle of 23, they have equity. They're willing to make, uh, uh, they're willing to sell. Spend 30 minutes a day practicing your script and role playing. In you know, and I always say 30 minutes is a long time. 15 minutes is what I used to do on a daily basis. Uh, script and role playing. By the way, I didn't have a role play partner, so I used to go into a closet. Um, at the office and it had a mirror and I would script and role play with the person in the mirror. That's, that's just how I did it. And George Philback used to do the same thing. I think we used the same closet at Cobalt Banker. Um, track and, and track everything. You, you know, if you're not tracking and measuring everything, you don't know where you need to work on. So if you're going on a bunch of appointments and you're not converting them, you need to work on your clothes. You got to close them. You got to ask for the business. Hey, what's stopping you from signing right now? What's stopping you from hiring me right now? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? All right. So if we could take care of all those things, you're ready to sign now. Okay. So track everything. Conduct two open houses a week. Listen, you don't have to do them on a Saturday and Sunday. Do them on a Monday and a Friday. Do them on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Two open, one during the week, one on the weekend. Here's the... Here's the QR code. <laughs> Did you get it, Chris? <laughs> All right. So, guys, the QR code will get you the uh, slides that are here and plus other slides and uh, scripts, okay? Uh, Bill Pipes was very generous on providing all this for us. And you guys uh, are welcome to download these, utilize them, 
I would say this PowerPoint, I just pulled some of the slides off the PowerPoint that you'll get. And um, I, I chose the slides that I thought were most important to give you guys value on this call today. Now, what I'd like to do is everyone, I can put it back up in a minute. Um, everyone who attended the Bill Pipes uh, uh, Monday through Wednesday presentation, you know, I know there's a lot of you on here. I asked you to be here. I would love for you guys to share one aha and one uh, plan of action that you're going to take that is going to make a difference in your business. And I'll start with Jennifer Tucker. No, I'm kidding, Jen. I'm not going to do that to you. All right. How about Lori Robles? Yeah, no, she she said she'll already kill me already. So um, I want to start off with, since I got the screen up here to sell it, I'm going to I'm going to ask you first, um, what, what's the one thing that was a big aha for you? And what's the one thing that you're going to take action on? And by the way, everyone else on this call, you might get this one idea from whoever's speaking to give you the most value today. My turn? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, if you give me a chance, I'm going to, I'm going to not stop talking. Ask well, Claire. that's why I have a mute button that I can mute you. It was amazing. It was amazing. So one of the things, it's I get paid to talk. And one really good, the scripts were amazing. Everything was amazing. But um, the routine, the afternoon routine. That for me was great because I do have the EM, AM, I'm sorry, AM uh, business routine and personal routine but not the personal PM. I don't know if people were not there. You know, you have to calm down and take it easy. Um, I don't do that. So I need to do that. <laughs> so I can prepare for the next day. Love but it. everything was amazing. So awesome. I can I'd keep talking. You were probably one of the first reg registrants, by the way. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to uh, uh, Tony. And then I'm gonna go to Lizette, and then I'm gonna go to Steve. Tony, did you you I I seen Crystal there. You went to it, Bill Pipes, right? I was there. I wasn't gonna miss it. I went to last year's uh, uh, down in Fort Lauderdale, and we had to stay in a in a hotel. This time we stayed. The hotel was my house because uh, I live out here and stuff. And he was only what twenty five minutes away from us. Yeah, I had to take advantage of it because there's a. I knew what he did last year. He had John Cheplak there last year, and a few other guys. Bear uh, was there also, and um, I knew. I mean, he this event he blew it away. I don't understand why there wasn't more of our agents there, but I did notice this, and I just want everybody to notice this, and everybody to to listen to this part. The majority of the icon agents, the majority of agents that you believe shouldn't have been there or shouldn't be there, the leaders, majority of them were there. Why weren't you there if you didn't go? I just have to I have to have to say that because these are the same people that I see. Steve Puig with Puig, Puig's there. Why is he there? He's a leader. Wisely said there. She's another leader. Why was I there? I'm, I could say I'm a leader too because everybody says I'm a leader, so I was there. I missed Ali Patobi. I didn't see him there, but I could understand why he might not have been there because he's always at a lot of the major events. But if you didn't go, you got to ask yourself, why didn't you go? I even had a new agent there. Han Young was there. Chris Perryman was there. All of them enjoyed it. They loved it. We're still doing our script practice today on this thing. This is the main thing. I had to go there to get my updated scripts. Here's the book. Here's last year's book. I have it. These things are like Bibles. And it didn't really cost that much to go to see this guy. This guy is just full of energy. I don't know where he gets it from. <laughs> you know, it might be the gym. It might be something he's drinking or smoking. But Bill Pice, is, he's the bomb. Yeah. He is. Ali was, at, Ali was at his brother-in-law's, uh, Bill Pipe's brother-in-law's event 
<laughs> uh, okay. Bill, I, know, Bill I, married, I see him everywhere all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah, Bill was married to Tom Ferry's, uh, Mike Fer uh, Matt Ferry's uh, sister and Mike Ferry's daughter. Tony, you made a great point. And, and here's the thing. By the way, as, as I was talking to Bill on Thursday, because I was traveling on Monday through Wednesday, as I was sitting down talking to Bill Pipes on Thursday, I said, I took advantage of your mess up. He goes, what, what are you talking about? I said, when you put that QR code up for that discount, he goes, oh, I know. I screwed up big time. You guys took advantage of that. And, you know, and he goes, I don't care. I am so grateful and thankful that they were able to go and get that discount that it, the more impact I make on other lives is, is going to help me grow even more. Mm -hmm. So awesome. All right. Who did I say was next? Lizette? Yeah, I'm next. Good morning. <laughs> morning, everyone. So uh, I'm going to go through that line of what Tony said. Um, success leaves clues. And if you're, if you gotta, you gotta like a lot of this is not really like we're running, but you know, sometimes we fail to stop and look around what's happening. Right. The same people, right. That I, and this is the beauty about real estate. The beauty about real estate. It's like, you can say all you want, but the beauty is you can actually track what people make. Right. So at the end of the day, if you're looking up people's numbers and they are, you know, in production and they are in these rooms, that should give you the first hint of where you need to be all the time. Right. In that room, uh, we were there and I and I uh, script the I'm not script the role play. You know, we lead generate, uh, get on the Zoom calls, uh, Tawanda, um, Steve Pew. You know, we like see each other so much sometimes that when we go like it's almost like we're seeing each other like family. Right. And, and, and I just want to resound that to what Tony said and like the $300 was nothing for everything we took that, that I, I sound like a nagging mom. I know I have five kids, but I'm going to get to it. So what I took away from this was that, uh, that schedule, the million dollar agent schedule, the AM, what he said, I said the AMP, um, the morning business routine, the morning personal routine, evening personal routine, evening business routine. And I love that he details things, right? Like even how, how you're going to say it, what you're going to say. I mean, it couldn't get any broken down Barney style. And and that's what I took. And, um, and, and so, um, what I took that I was going to implement, believe it or not, it's tweaking my schedule. So instead of lead generating two hours, it's a, and it was like, I was lead generating three days a week. Now I'm going to lead generate every single day, three hours a day, by the way, prospecting, like they didn't say social media for three hours. They didn't say, um, you know, three hours. No, they, literally a must non-negotiable is three hours of prospecting. You, you know, Lizette, he was mentioning, uh, he mentioned there's an app that will restrict you from getting on your social media more than a certain amount of time a day. I have to get that from him. Um, so you can download the app and, and say, I, I'll only be on social media an hour a day, and it'll only allow you to get on your social media for an hour a day. He said he was saving himself over three hours a day from social media once he implemented that, um, that app. Thank you guys for your input. Stevie. Are you ready? Hey, so good morning. On. Good morning. Okay. How do I follow all this? I'm calling huh? Lori next. Yeah, yes, you should. Hey, she was impacted. I'm so glad she came. You know, I'm so, so glad that she came. So uh, if anything came out of this, that's I'm, I'm most thankful for that. Um, the biggest thing seems to be the schedule. It is for me, there's always another level, right? I used to do affirmations and then I quit. The first sale you have to make in the morning is you, right? So running that AMP, all that personal routine, you know, one thing he said, which it, Bill cracks me up, was just feeding your mind and your brain positive stuff first thing in the morning, you know, instead of going to Starbucks and get an extra shot of kapha, laka, maca, whatever the hell it is, feed your brain some, some good stuff, right? Instead of a bunch of sugar from Starbucks. Maybe that might be a better way to start your day. So, um, and then the other thing was busy, uh, not effective. 
And I, I've struggled with this, right? It's making sure, I think that if we truly look at our time and we kept a kept a tracker of what we were doing throughout the week, at the end of the week, most of us would fire ourselves, right? So it's just being busy, um, make sure that we're not just in busyness, we're, we're in business and we're effective. Just being more intentional with my time. And I, I know I need to. There's always that next level. And, and that's what I've committed to doing with my schedule from here on out. So that's that's the biggest thing I got out of it, Tom. And then obviously the lead gen, which we know, it's, it, it's action, right? Imperfect action beats perfect inaction every time. So you just got to get into action. There's some point, at some point, you just got to, you just got to do it. That's it. That's my soapbox. Thank you, man. I love it. I love it. Lori. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. Look at you. You're in that gym sweating it out. I can see you. Okay. Hi. Good morning. So for me, it was, I, I can't even, there's so much mindset the first thing i mean i've been in a slum i've had a lot of stuff a lot of distractions happening so i really was at the point like maybe i'm done with real estate at this point like i'm done with people just dealing with it and everything and i've been struggling with this and so i was i mean i texted steve twice already since then in the morning i'm like alpha up alpha up <laughs> You know, and I'm sending him videos and stuff because it was so empowering and like moving and how you talk to yourself every day. And in that seminar was the first time I've ever role played, believe it or not, but it is the first time I role played in front of people and made phone calls. He forced us to make these phone calls and I actually got a referral out of it. Um, so it's just really practicing that routine, that AM, you know, I've got the AM down. I do the workout. If I could attack real estate the way I do working out, it would be life changing for me. And so getting my mindset to real estate, the way I do this stuff for me has been mind blowing. And I mean, even yesterday I took, you know, yes, I'm, I'm doing this long drive for these clients. I'm way out of my area, but on the way I'm making phone calls. And I'm listening to these motivational messages. Last night before I went to sleep, I was listening to the Wayne Dyer, you know, and I fell asleep listening to these, like, you can do this. And just like finishing out my day and thinking about the accomplishments, the, the wins I had throughout the day instead of, oh, gosh, I didn't do this enough because I got super overwhelmed with, oh, I've got to. I've got to do a hundred calls. I've got to do this. And like, I got super overwhelmed with all the stuff that I have to get done. And so I broke it. It This seminar helped me break it down in little chunks. So it was great. Awesome. Hey, by the way, um, Jennifer Tucker, thank you for sending that to me. Uh, Opal app, O-P-A-L. And it's a app uh, for screen time for focus. So uh, that's what Bill was talking about. Bill, Bill is, um, he lives by his, uh, his, his coaching, right? He's, he leads by example. He 100% leads by example. And that's what I love about great coaches is they lead by example. They do the activities too. He's lead generating. He's doing these activities. He's researching scripts and everything else. He's researching the market. So when he's speaking, he's knowledgeable. He's not selling real estate. He's giving us the best information to sell more real estate. And, and Lori, congratulations to you for taking the time to go and not giving up. Here's the thing. We all get complacent. And we all look for the out when we're not when when we're not getting it easy, right? To get into shape, Lori, with you and Victor, the way you guys train, and I know that Victor's not going to be at eight percent body fat if he doesn't work out for three months straight. He's got, it's a lot of work, and there's a lot of a, a lot of headache. There's a lot of preparation, um, all that stuff, and that's the same thing with our business. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of preparation, but all the rewards come based on what the activities that we do. So most coaches will always post, show me your lead generation schedule and I'll show you your success. If we're so, not, 
If we're not succeeding, we're not lead generating. That's it. Han, Han, I hope I, please, I, excuse me for. Uh, hello, hello. You hear me? Yes. Yes. Hey, yeah, it's, it's Han. Yeah. Han. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I just want to add in real quick because um, some of the things that Coach Pipe said, like mindset, you know, routine, everything's super important. Uh, like this is one quote I wrote down on my notes. It says, um, sell data over drama, uh, which is like really, really kind of like resonated with me, especially because um, I also dropped down these some of these notes here. It said like the average, like the attorney, uh, 80 years of school, you know, 250,000 investment. And then doctors, 14 years, uh, pilots, 67 years. And then there's me, real estate, three years. You know, and we can earn up to 500 to a million, which is like super like compare and contrast. It's just like we're in the business of like if we really want to make it, we can. And it's possible within a very short amount of time compared to some of the other um, professions out there. Um, so, yeah, that that was uh, that was it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Mm. I love that data over drama. Right. You know, that's that's so important. And then when they when you hear the drama, provide the data and walk away um, or or just, you know, do the right thing, because that that negativity is easy to fall into. I can find myself falling into it real quickly, too. And I have to pull myself out real quick. Pull yourself out quickly with the naysayers, the, the people who are saying real estate's not the business anymore. By the way, I've been through some of the ups and downs in real estate and I heard it then. And you know what? I I seen top performers doing $20 million in sales at the time when the market crashed last time to getting out of the business, to coming back in the business uh, when the market was great. And now they're going back out of the business because here's the thing, they don't want to do the work. You know, order takers, you know, if you want to be an order taker, Go and work at a, a, a Publix or Wawa. You're an order taker. You're ringing sales. Boom, done. You're earning an income. But if you want to be a business owner, get out there and do the work. Get out there and do the work. Make it happen. Make it Tom, happen. Tom, real quick. National Association of Realtors put out a slide deck. So if you guys check it, go on to National Association of Realtors. But new members that came into the business in 2023... 136,000 exiting members, realtors that left, 162,000. So there was a net loss of 26,000 last year. But there's a good slide deck in there talks about um, longer days on market, that the sellers netted less, something you could add to your listing presentation. So just check it out, National Association of Realtors. Steve, thanks for that. I, I, had, I was talking to a guy yesterday in the gym. He goes, hey, Tom, I heard the market's crashing. I said, you know what, Joe, you own four properties. Let's sit down and talk about getting them on the uh, market right away. What do you want me to say? If that's your mindset and you're trying to thought, let's sell your property, right? So, um, you know, I, I again, utilize your knowledge and, and put that in perspective. Oh, the market's crashing. I'm a buyer. Well, you know what? Here's a, here's an interesting fact that I don't know if Bill Pipes put this up or or National Associations of Realtors put this up and was that I'll come to you in one second. The average net worth of a renter is less than twenty thousand dollars. The average net worth of a homeowner is over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Let that sink in. The average net worth of a renter is less, I think it's less than 20,000. The average net worth of a homeowner is over $350,000. If you guys are looking, that slide is in here too, Tom, but yeah, spot on. Was I on the, was, was I pretty on on the numbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so there you go. Lizette. Yeah, one thing also, he, he talked about um, choices. Um, that I just want to bring that up. Yeah, he talked about when you make, if you look in the past and the choices you've made is based on how you were feeling at the moment. So he's talking about emotion. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was something worth mentioning. And and the other thing is coming into reality. A lot of 160,000 agents left, but, you know, a lot of it is, the, you know, I do see the attitude, you know, I oh, I know more, you know, like, you know, it, it, there's like a lack of realizing, like a reality, it's like I'm a false reality of where I'm at. You know, and then it's like, 
you know, we, we don't, there's no accountability. I've seen a lot of that. I'm just mentioning it out there because, you know, if, if we're not examining where we are really at in our business and what we're doing, we live, we're living in a surreal world, right? And then subconsciously what we do, we exit out of the business because we're not willing to kind of like, hey, what are we really, what choices are we really making daily that we're not getting the success other people are having, you know, even in my local market. It doesn't have to be superstars. Yeah. You know, that's that's, just... that's what I'm telling our people, Tom, right now, right? There's three groups of people. There's people with all these not changes. One group is just, you know, sticking their head in their sand and, you know, the, the world is falling down chicken little. The other group is is saying nothing's going to change. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And they're both wrong, right? We just, you just need to be resourcefully realistic about with all the changes and, and just, you know, use your resources and be aware of it and level up. That's it. Yeah. So here's the thing too, right? Why, why do so many people focus on the things they can't control? And 95% of the things they can't control that they, they worry about never come, never, never had to be worried about in the first place. See, it doesn't matter what the market's doing. It doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter, right? We, we put in our vote. We do our job. It doesn't matter about the drivers on the road. What we can control is how we uh, do our activities, how we interact with the consumer, how we have the positive mindset to succeed. The most successful realtors in the industry thrive in the market we're in today. The most successful people in business started a business at the time where people were getting out of that business. So right now is your time. Um, so we're at 9.35 and uh, we can go ahead and stop the recording now.